everybody. Happy Tuesday. Uh, sorry I wasn't able to do the live last Tuesday. Um, and I had a lovely guest speaker, um, Belinda Chapman. We've rescheduled for a couple of weeks' time um, because I caught that yucky, yucky virus that's going around. And unfortunately, uh, there was just no way I was going to be able to do a live. Um, wasn't feeling crash hot at all. So uh, I would love to hear if you're joining me live. Um, it's not saying. So please pop in the comments um, and let me know that you are here and that it's uh, working because I'm really excited about tonight's topic and um, what I'm going to share with you and can't wait to hear from you all as well. So um, I'm just setting up on my end. So yeah, if you can pop in the comments that you're joining me. Um, whoops. Got all my notifications on because I haven't done these for a couple of weeks. While I'm waiting for everyone to join, just thought I'd quickly let you know we had um, self love retreat, not the weekend we just had, the weekend before. Um, it was so amazing. I had some fantastic women join me from all over Perth, different areas of Perth. And uh, yeah, we had a beautiful time together, went on a great little journey going through all the different areas of self love. Um, on nutrition, mindset, some cooking lessons, and how we can support ourselves. Um, so, yeah, it was fantastic. We had some sound healing. Uh, we had yoga, Pilates, meditation, cacao ceremony. It was really, really awesome. So I'm going to share some of the photos of that, of the retreat in this uh, Facebook group. I just haven't had time. Last week was interesting. It <laughs> was a busy, busy, uh, busy week in bed. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if anybody else has has caught it and and knows what it feels like. But uh, yeah, I feel like I'm come. I've come out the other side and I'm feeling heaps better now. Um, it was just really getting used to. Um, also giving up to my body instead of trying to do things. I don't know about you guys, but I. Um, I love <laughs> love doing lots and lots of things. So if you are joining tonight, um, it would be great if you grab a pen and paper. So please, um, if you, you don't have to, it's an option. If you are sitting down um, and you're at a desk or the dining room table, or even if you're on the couch, grab a pen and paper so that we can do this together. And uh, I know Abby's just tagging a few people in. There's quite a lot of you that said you would like to uh, join this event. So um, I'll get started when um, I can, it freezes all the time. Ah, oh, okay. Not sure what's going on, just reading some comments. So if you could pop in the comments if you're joining me and you can see me okay. So I did go live and my computer just totally stopped. Um, so this is the second time. <laughs> I'm just reading comments, but I'm, I'm assuming everything is good with you all. So if you are already and you want to, you're welcome to grab a pen and paper. I'll get started and, um, yeah, get, get into it. Um, and... Yeah, I'm not sure who's joining. So Facebook's not showing me anything. I'm not sure if anybody's on or anything like that. Um, but I just want to get going. So so let me know. Um, oh, thanks, Abby. I'm back. <laughs> I'm back. Excuse me if you hear me cough. But apart from that, I'm feeling pretty, pretty great and ready to get back into it. So if it's all right with you, ladies, um, I'm going to share my screen and I'm doing that because it keeps me on topic and make sure that I keep to um, what the topic is about tonight and just so I don't go on different tangents. Uh, Facebook is saying that it's not um, showing. So just checking that this is working. Abby, can you just let me know that the video is working? I've got no comments or anything coming up which is a bit of a pain because I'd love to be able to see you all um, and see some comments so if you can pop in the comments 
um, if you are joining me and that you can see and hear me okay, and I'll get started. Okay, I've got one comment. Uh, Denise, yay! <laughs> okay, so it looks like it's working. All right, great. So I'm going to share my screen with you. Um, and like I said, you're welcome to grab a pen and paper uh, and let me know um, that you can see my screen okay. Hopefully you can and it's not freezing for you. Not sure why it is because nobody's using the internet here. So um, yeah, let's hope it all works good. So if you might grab a pen and paper and let's get started and I will just keep checking for um, comments um, as we get going. So how to take control of your life. What an interesting topic, hey? Uh, so yeah, let's get started. Oh, thanks, Amanda. And thank you for joining. Um, all right, so would love for you to share off the bat straight away. Yes, I'm going to ask you to share. <laughs> Why do you feel out of control of your life? So you've decided to join tonight's event on how to take control of your life. So the first thing I'd love to know is why do you feel out of control of your life, um, of your life, in your life, about your life? Why do you feel out of control? If we don't figure out some of these answers at the start, it's very hard to be able to create some control in our life. So why do you feel out of control? And I'll give you a second to pop um, your answers in the comments. So why do you feel out of control in your life? Maybe it's just a feeling you have, or maybe you're very clear that you're feeling that way. Um, so an understanding what for me it's easier for me to understand um, why you feel a certain way because then that way I can help you um, make those changes and um, yeah move forward so let's see um, I procrastinate all the time oh yes I totally get where you're coming from <laughs> because I'm a big one on procrastinating too um, well, I used to be, I've kind of got a hold of it now, but procrastination is very interesting. We are going to cover that tonight. Um, so that's a good one um, that you procrastinate is the reason why you're feeling out of control. Um, I would love to hear if you know why you procrastinate. Are you aware of the reasons why? Um, and for the rest of you, yep, just pop in the comments. Why do you feel out of control in your life right now? Uh, I know for me, when I was feeling really out of control of my life, it was because I was doing things that I didn't want to do. That was a big one for me, was just not doing what um, what was in alignment with what is actually that I was wanting for my life. Um, unhappy with living situation. Yep. Unhappy with your current situation is definitely um, a reason why you would feel out of control. Keep them coming and I will, um, I'd love to read them because they're going to help me to make sure I cover those things tonight with you. So what does being in control of your life mean to you? Uh, just to have some time as our emotions can take over. Yes, big one, Denise, for sure. So what does being in control of your life mean to you? And this is interesting because everybody feels differently about um, what their, um, why has that got that there and, and not, anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, so what does being in control of your life mean to you? What does it mean to you to be in control of your life? And I'm sure all our answers are different because when we think we know what being in control of our life is, um, having a, a, a clear understanding of that is also going to help us propel us in the right way, in the, in the, in the right direction. 
Um, well, even doing this is terrifying. My hands are shaking so much and then I couldn't figure out where the link was. This is so new to me. Oh, that's okay. Thank you for joining us, Vicky. Um, I, yeah, I'm, I'm wondering why it's, I get technology is scary for a lot of people. So if it's the technology, um, just know that no one can see you. We can only see your comments, those of us that are um, part of this right now. So um, yeah, and, and an option is to grab a pen and paper and just write down your answers as well. So you can go back and reflect over it. So what does being in control of your life mean to you? And Denise said better choices. I love that. Yeah, better choices is when you feel more in control, maybe. Uh, so the first one, are you living in avoidance? So what does this mean if you're living in avoidance? I don't know how to get rid of that bottom, my bottom screen and make it hide. So that's very annoying, but anyway. <laughs> Uh, so living in avoidance, I'm going to put these questions up and I'm asking you, and I'd love you, if any of this relates to you, please pop it in the comments. This is the first part of us taking control of our life is to see where we're actually at, what our thoughts are, our feelings are, our behavior is in this area. And you may already realize what you have got going on or where you are in your life or you may not and this is going to bring those things up and, and out into the light for you so are you living in avoidance do you find that you try to avoid conflict uh, are there parts of your life that you are avoiding deliberately because you um, don't want to address it are you avoiding conversations and uh, it could be a conversation with family members a loved one, a partner, in friendships, at work? Are you avoiding change? Do you feel resistant to making any kind of changes in your life? Are you avoiding um, doing anything for yourself, even though you know it's going to better yourself? It's going to improve your situation. There are reasons why we avoid. So pop in the comments if you are avoiding. Um, uh putting myself out there yes avoidance putting ourselves out there for sure um <clears throat> and i've been there too so i i know what it feels like are you avoiding emotions um so avoiding um helps us temporarily um from having to deal with uh anxiety shame um disappointment grief so we can we can avoid parts of our lives or all parts of our lives because we don't want to feel anything and trying to control our thoughts and feelings by being in an avoidance actually avoiding all situations um, i'm working closer and more honestly with my doctor yes uh, <laughs> yeah, Denise, technology, hey. So here's another one. Are you feeling unfulfilled? Do you wake up and feel each day like Groundhog Day? Are you dragging yourself around? Do you feel like you have nothing to look forward to? Are you feeling stuck, anxious? Are you looking for meaning in life? These are all important questions for us to be able to understand where we are in our views of life. So are you feeling unfulfilled? And sometimes we don't know that we're unfulfilled um, because we either haven't done any work on it, we've never stopped to really think about it, uh, we might not be we might be where I was at the last slide, which is in avoidance. And so we're ignoring those things and, and, and not trying to deal with them. Groundhog Day for sure, yeah. So that's um, feeling unfulfilled is, is a big one um, that gets a lot of women. 
<clears throat> do you feel like, does life feel like a struggle? So when I say that, it's, if you know the answer to this, you know whether you're struggling or not. You're feeling like things are too hard. Uh, maybe you have a mindset that you're unlucky. Uh, maybe you feel like nothing feels good. And I think when we're struggling, nothing feels good. We can't, we can't get anywhere. We're really, really stuck. Stuck and it just feels heavy and hard. So does life feel like a struggle to you? Uh, and again, these are things that I've definitely been through and I felt um, myself. So I do know um, that feeling of like when you're struggling that you, you don't have any control of your life. Like it is not just out of reach, but feels so, um, so far from from your grasp. Do you feel like you're not having fun? Again, this is a key one to being out of control in your life is if you're not having fun. Who is having fun here and who's not having fun? Would love to hear it from you if you feel like you're not having fun. I didn't realize I wasn't having fun until I worked on it. And uh, I didn't even realize how hard it was for me to laugh or how hard it was for me to, the, the struggle of, I was taking myself so seriously. And when you're not having fun, um, you're just really, you're not enjoying life. So how can you take control of your life if you're not having fun and you're not enjoying yourself? So Amanda said, no fun. Yeah, yeah, that's, that is a key sign to not having control over, of our life as well. <clears throat> Are you neglecting your health? Obviously, this is a big, important one for me um, because this is my area of expertise, uh, health but also because it's such a high value for me. And when I didn't have control over my life, I also had no control over my health. I had, um, you know, I was just winging it. I was just, it was not a priority. It wasn't part of my daily thoughts. I just was, yeah, really neglecting it and not putting it first. So I'd love to hear from you. Are you neglecting your health? Is that something that you're, um, you know you're doing, but you're not changing um, or, you know, doing anything about it? Annie said she's guilty of neglecting her health. Yeah, okay, that's great. And it's the first step, right? The first step is to acknowledge. And that's what we're doing tonight. We're acknowledging the parts that are out of control, the parts that we're, um, we know that we're really sucking at at the moment. Um, Shania, yes, neglecting my health, no motivation to change. Oh, sorry, Denise, that's not good. Uh, yeah, maybe it's your Wi-Fi or your data. Um, so neglecting my health, no motivation. So why do you have no motivation to change? Hmm. And here's a big one for you, right? I'm about to cover a big one and I really want to hear from you all. Is your past in your present? Is your past still playing out a big key role in your present? Now, this can feel really um, vulnerable to share, right? But it's, it's important that we acknowledge and we understand that when our and when we're when we're our past is part of our life when we're keeping it there like this picture shows it's very hard to have control of over our lives 
So if we think about past being in the past, present being in the present, future being in the future, if we are walking around literally dragging along parts of our past but expecting to be in control of our life, we're really putting a lot of expectations on ourselves because how, how big is the past? How heavy is it? How much is it, is it consuming us? So if you want to have control of your life, how much are you actually living in the past, living backwards? So <coughs> he said it lives on my shoulder like a blood-sucking leech. Yeah, it does. It can. It can do. Uh, um. I often live in my past causing many negative issues. So it's really figuring out what it is about your past that you feel a need to hold on to. What is it about your past that you feel a need to bring into the present, to hold into the present? Because you're ultimately having this control your life in a negative way, not in a positive way. So what is it that makes you keep the past in the present? What is it that is holding that past in the present? I know for me that uh, there were a lot of emotions about my, my past. There was my um, experiences, my traumas, um, there was my shame, my guilt, um, my real disappointment in myself. Uh, and I was hanging on to those things. And when we're hanging on to those things, we're really stuck, um, stuck in the past, stuck in, in a different mindset, in, in a different belief. Here's a key, another key one, uh, unregulated emotions controlling your life. Uh, I had to do a lot of work in this area because I did not realise that they were controlling my life. And I'll tell you how this came about. Because um, shame, guilt, low self-love, yes. So when we don't know how to regulate our emotions what we do is we bury them and we can do that through numbing ourselves through um, food uh, or we can just go and try and push it and not deal with it but what happens is that stuff comes up right it, it there is no other way for it to happen but for it to come up and then we ultimately end up having to deal with it anyway uh, and it, it brews under the surface. And a lot of the times anxiety that we're experiencing is unregulated emotions. Our anxiety is us not knowing what to do with our emotions and how to safely deal with our emotions in a way that is healthy for us. And then what can happen also is our emotions come out at the wrong time. And when they come out at the wrong time, um, we can act inappropriately. So that can be where we kind of blow up or we go and numb ourselves or um, we are just not um, dealing with, with our emotions in a healthy and safe way. Um, I lived with my past for so many years, but when I let it go, I felt a lot better. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So unregulated emotions controlling our lives is actually a really big one. And I think it's because us women are told constantly that we're over emotional, that we, um, oh, so many terms like you wear your, your emotions um, you're always emotional, you're always crying, you're always upset. And um, we're also always trying to put on a strong, brave face. And when we do all those sort of things and those sort of behaviours, 
we're not able to deal with our emotions or know how to deal with our emotions. And then we're really struggling to regulate them in a healthy way. Um, and we've, we've got into a pattern of like pushing them down and, and not dealing with them. When we don't deal with our emotions, it's very hard to have control over our life and to really be honoring um, the parts of our life that we are really wanting to, to honor and, 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 and fulfill and, and live in. So what are your beliefs about your life and achieving your goals? If you've got the pen and paper, this is where you're going to write this down. But I do would really love it if you could share with us, um, share with each other. This is really how we um, do take control of our lives by making the um, awareness and acknowledging how we're feeling. What are your beliefs about your life and you achieving your goals? So do you know what your beliefs are about your life? <coughs> <coughs> <laughs> excuse me a cough lingering around from last week I wait, want to hear from you what are your beliefs about your life currently and I'm happy to share mine <coughs> what are my beliefs about my life and one of the beliefs that come up for me in my life which hold me back and stop me from feeling or being in control of my life is when I get into the mindset and the belief that um, the things I want to achieve are hard work, that to get where I want to get to takes a lot of blood, sweat and tears. <coughs> and I know that those beliefs hold me back. And I do do the work on myself to um, move past that. But every now and again, that imposter syndrome comes in or that limiting belief comes in. And I think to myself, I have to hustle. I have to exhaust myself. I have to be at burnout to be able to reach my goals and to get to where I want to get to. So what are your beliefs about your life? Are you happy to share those? Um, and what are your beliefs around you achieving your goals? Are you very clear? Do you know what your beliefs are there? Um, or are you not really sure what your belief system is when it comes to your life and you achieving your goals? Um, <coughs> I got a real tickle in my throat, sorry. So are you ready to take back control of your life now? Say yes in the comments if you are. We must believe in ourselves, have faith in ourselves, put our mind, our focus on what we want to achieve. Absolutely, 100%. Yeah, for sure. Um, so what are your beliefs then so if your beliefs are positive um you're halfway there right <coughs> are you ready to take back control of your life oh hey roma can't wait to see you next week um hurts in the past make it a bit fearful about certain situations going forward having my working hours being cut at work really affects me as that makes me feel not good enough, not worthy, not valued. Also affects my finance, which upsets me because I feel out of control in that area. Mm. But are you out of control in that area? Uh, I'm going to give you 10 tips on how to take back control of your life. But first, I'm going to say something that has come to me that is not in the top 10 tips um, <clears throat> and it's mainly because of Roma's um, what she's saying is exactly what happens to us is that something happens in our life something big that really impacts us um, and I hope you don't mind, Roma, I'm going to use your situation where hours cut down at work um, so then 
comes up those limiting beliefs of I'm not worthy, I'm not good enough, I'm not valued, and then it affects our um, finances um, and we can feel out of control in those areas. So what if life isn't happening to you? What if life isn't happening to you? What if your life is happening for you? So what do I mean? What happens when we stop and look at life happening to us? If we're looking at it from that point of view and we start looking at it, how it's happening for us, not to us. When I went through a traumatic experience a few years ago uh, and had the rug pulled out from under me, my first reaction was to be in that trauma. You know, I had to go through those processes. I had to go through that, those feelings and those emotions and that experience. It was very traumatic. And I had to support myself as much as I could um, and acknowledge what I was feeling in that traumatic experience and that traumatic thing that happened to me. But when I, and I didn't sleep, I had anxiety, I had panic attacks, I doubted everything, I saw everything negatively, it all felt hard. When I stopped and looked at how my life was happening for me, huge shift happened huge shift it's like my whole world was flipped upside down and I actually stopped trying to control everything because when we're out of control we actually try to control everything and I believed in the fact that life was happening for me and by doing this I was able to let go of the idea of everything being a certain way that we will always find the right job for us. We will always find the right amount of money to pay the bills. We will always find the right friends and the right situations depending on how we're looking at life and how we're showing up for ourselves. And when we're not trying to hold on and be in control of everything, when we're letting go and allowing our life to come about, we still have to do the steps to bring about the things that we want in our life. But when we stop trying to, to um, have an idea of how everything's supposed to be when we stop trying to control and how it's got to be and we show um, and we show how our, we, sh we show up for our lives huge transformations happen huge transformations and and going back to what happened to me was that some massive doors opened opportunities opened I um you know three years ago I had been coaching for three four years at the time and I took I was pushed into um into doing it full time and there was that I had to show up for myself and it was scary like where's the money where's the where's the clients I've gone from working part-time in my coaching to full-time so I needed more coaching clients I needed to get my put myself out there and there was so much that had happened to me I was still experiencing the trauma that I'd gone through and I thought to myself you know what it, it's this is the way it's supposed to be and be okay with it be totally okay with it and and go I can't hold on to anything I can't be in control being being feeling um like like the world is against me wasn't getting me anywhere 
And the minute I let go of all that, my life totally changed. It has propelled me forwards. And it's so fast now, the things that happen and come to me, I still sit back in awe and go, oh my gosh, I am so thankful. I am so grateful. The, the life that I have, there's so many things that are exactly as they're supposed to be. And I just share that um, because of what Roma wrote just reminded me I've been there and I've been through that. Um, so let's get to are you ready to take back control of your life? And I would love to hear it. I, I like to have your permission to share my 10 tips with you. Um, and I know I've gone a bit over on time already. So I, if you um, pop a yes in the comments, I'm happy to share with you um, the tips that I have and the things that I have done to take control of my life and make the changes and, and create the life that I really wanted to live. Um, Denise said, journaling, writing down our goals and what we want to achieve. Oh, uh, yeah, you've, you've um, really hitting the nail on the head tonight. Awesome. And looks like I've got some yeses coming through. So permission uh, is important to me to share um, and know that you are open to hearing and receiving. Um, it's a real thing. <laughs> All right, first thing, know what you want. When you know what you want, you can receive it. You can't receive something if you don't know what you want. So you are welcome to pop in the comments. What do you want? Um, know what you want. What are you living for? What are you wanting? If you don't know, there is nothing there for you to create. If you don't know, there is nothing that you can bring in. If you don't know, you can't move forwards. You can't go forward. You can't achieve if you're not clear on what you want. So I'd love to hear, what do you want? Do you know what you want? It could be just that you write, yes, you know what you want. This is something that was said to me for so many years and I didn't get it. You ready? Let the universe know whatever your universe is to you, right? Let the universe know. I didn't know what that meant and it means different for everybody. If it's if you are, if you're a believer of whatever religion, whatever spirituality, whatever the universe or, you know, Gaia, whatever, whatever anything means to you, you need to let it out. That is the first thing. It is key. Know what you want. Number two. Get crystal clear on your goals. What do I mean? What I mean is if your goal is to lose five kilos, you need to get crystal clear on your goal. What is it that you're actually going to do to lose that five kilos? <coughs> what are you prepared to do? Get crystal clear on your goals because if you're not crystal clear on your goals, again, same as number one, you can't bring that in. You cannot generate that. You, you, it, 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 if you don't know which way you're headed, how are you going to know which way to go if you're not crystal clear? When you're crystal clear, you you can manifest these things. You can, um, you can bring these things about in such a different way. So some of the ways I get crystal clear on my goals, I write it out. And a few people said this, Denise, one of them, journal. Um, I have a mission statement. 
that I update all the time and read on a daily basis. Get really clear um, on your mission in life. What is it that you are here to do? What is your uh, service to the world? Uh, what is your service to the family or your loved ones? Get really crystal clear. Own your time. This is something that I do with my clients. I think it's really key. Why? Because a lot of the time, we, a lot of the time, huh, see what I did there? A lot of the time, we make up so many excuses of that time is the reason why we're not achieving our goals. Time is a reason why we're out of control in our life. Time is why we're not, we're, we're not, we're still at A and we haven't got to B. And I just call bullshit, to be honest. And that is BS because there is enough time. I know for one, I used to always say to myself, I don't have time. I'm too busy. I don't have time. But there's always time. Everybody's so busy doing this, sitting on their phones, um, watching TV, watching the, the, the idiot box, and we're not owning our time. There is plenty of time for us to get control of our life, right? So what I do with my clients is I say, well, write down exactly what you do all day, every day. And when you have to write down exactly how much time you spend doing things that have absolutely no meaning whatsoever, you realize why you don't have control of your life because you're wasting time on stuff that doesn't matter. And I'm not saying that sitting down and binge watching on Netflix every now and again doesn't serve a purpose when you're exhausted or um, you, you've, you've gone through something and you need some time out. But if you're doing that on a daily basis, then really, are you actually owning your time? Do you know how to own your time? Owning your time means having structures, routines and living with intention. How do highly successful people achieve so much more than we do? How do highly successful people achieve so much? They own their time. They don't waste their time. You'll see them get up at 4.30 in the morning so that they have a morning routine. They have structure in their day. All their time throughout the day is, is structured. It, it's, it's, there's, it's allocated somewhere. And I know that people can be really resistant in having schedules and, and, and routines and structure. But ask yourself, what is it that you're resisting there? Right? Um, if anything resonates, pop it in the comments. <clears throat> Get super focused on living and creating your life. So I do this every day and I allocate this um, via my time on getting super focused on living and creating my life on a daily basis. So when I get up in the morning on weekdays, not so much on the weekends, sometimes on Saturdays, definitely don't do it on Sundays, I'll be honest. Um, I get super focused on living and creating my life. So that is brain dumping, journaling, body scanning, connecting with my body, connecting with my mind, connecting with my breath, reading my mission statement, doing health um, routines and rituals in the morning to up-level my health, um, looking at my vision board. That's my vision board there. Um, thinking about the words and the language I use with myself on a daily basis. That is getting super focused on living and creating my life. Owning my time is my greatest challenge. What if it's not, Annie? What if it's not? So what I would suggest is write down what you're doing during the day and night. Write it all down. Write every single thing down next to the time and, and work that out and you will see. Get organized. This is where, this is where time, where we do get to control our time, we get to own our time, is when we get organized. 
the people that are the most disorganized have no control over their life. So if you're wanting control over your life, get organized. And this season goes to how tidy your car is. This goes to how organized your drawers are in the kitchen. Why? Why do these things really matter? Because if your car is a mess, your mind is probably a mess. If your drawers are a mess, your mind is probably a mess. You can't find stuff. You're wasting time trying to find things. You're wasting time that you could be doing things that are actually productive. So simply getting organized is going to help you actually free up your time. Getting organized helps you get control back of your life, helps you be behind the steering wheel instead of sitting in the back seat. And being getting organized is whatever it means to you. If it means, you know, that the best way you can get organized is to have a diary, then awesome. If it's the next level and having an organized house, awesome. If it's the next thing and having structures, routines, rituals, things that serve you, awesome. And just keep checking if anyone's left um, a comment. Stop putting everyone before you. Women, women, women are notorious for this. We are nurturers by, um, you know, that, that's, that's the way we are. We are designed that way. We, we nurture people. We love on everybody. And I think that's awesome. And I think that's great. But what happens is we are putting others before ourselves. Mothers do this, especially with kids, especially when the kids are young. And this always comes down to the same thing. You've got to put the mask on in the airplane before you can put the mask on anybody else. You are never going to show up as your best self and you are never going to be in control of your life if you are putting everybody else first. Nobody will ever put you first. There are family members that, any direct family members and your outside family members that will love the fact that you put them all first. I'm sure that, you know, there are a lot of men out there and I'm not trying to be, you know, I'm, I'm, I've got two boys and, I, and I'm married, like I'm not trying to knock men, but hey, if they get to go to work and come home and everything else is done for them, they're not going to complain and they're not going to change anything, right? But what we seem to do is we seem to put everybody first and I think this is also comes down to our self-worth. We feel that if we take care of everybody, if everybody sees how fantastic we are, if everybody is there to say, you've done an awesome job, thank you for doing this, we're going to feel so much better about ourselves. When in fact, we generally feel tired, exhausted, even resentful, disappointed, Imagine if you put yourself first and you were still able to help and support everybody else in your family. That's me, people pleaser. Yeah. So I would say in answer to that, do some work on that. Um, why are you putting everyone before you? What, what is coming up for you? What is it that you're feeling that you need to do that? Because it was modeled to you, because you just started it, you've been doing it for many years and you don't know how to undo it. And I think when we show up putting ourselves first, we actually can model how other people can treat us. And if you are a parent, you can model how your children need to show up for themselves because I'm pretty sure that we would tell our children to put up themselves first. And I'm not talking about in a selfish, egotistical way or anything like that. I'm saying that you do what you want to do. Built from my past. Yeah, okay. So that's interesting. You need to have some, you know, time around that need to honor yourself 
with that and really um, work on that so that you can really start working on that belief that you have around that and change that. Learn to say no. <laughs> Back with um, stop putting everyone before you. Learn to say no. And it's okay to say no. Um, I, I find it hard when I have to say no. But the more I do it, the better I am at it. And think of it like flexing a new muscle, right? You, the more you do it, the more you build that muscle, the bigger the muscle grows, the better you get at it. And you don't have to explain yourself. You can just say no. It doesn't need to be no but or no because or no, I can't because it's just no. We never owe anybody anything. If you want to explain, you can, but you actually don't need to. Own your life by saying no when you want to say no. This is where control comes in. This is how we can control our life. Up-level yourself. Why would you not want to do this? This is where we grow. This is where we can really um, broaden our thinking and just, you know, nothing stops us. And this is by up-leveling ourselves. So how do you up-level yourself? I'd love to hear if you already do this work. Um, but it's by learning. So what can you put in, into your ears? What can you listen to? So right now you're doing some up-leveling of yourself because you're learning about how you can, can take control of your life. But what else can you do? Every day there's time blocked into my um, morning where I'm learning. There is time blocked into my day where I'm growing. I am looking at the people around me and I'm seeing how I can learn and grow from them. Are they the right people in my life? Are they people that are high achievers? Are they working really hard? Do they know what they want? You can up-level yourself with a coach. You can be a nutrition and mindset coach like me, but maybe it's a personal development coach. Maybe it's um, a spiritual coach. Uh, maybe it's a mentor. Maybe you would benefit from being mentored by someone. Who you surround yourself with is another way of being able to up-level yourself. I spent many years um, being around toxic people and I had no control over my life. Um, and I actually let those people control my life. When we up-level ourselves, we, we know how to say no. We know how to own our time. We know where we spend our time um, and we do set up um, beautiful routines and rituals. Uh, yeah, positive motivational talks, absolutely, for sure. So really up-leveling yourself is, is key here. Living gratitude. When you're feeling out of control, when you're feeling stuck um, and you remove yourself from where you are and you get into gratitude so you think about what is it that you have to be grateful for well I know the most important thing I have to be grateful for is that I'm here on this earth uh, I have a purpose I have a mission I'm here to serve others beautiful women such as yourselves I am very grateful that I get to do my dream job on a daily basis. I get to show up in, as my best version um, and I get an opportunity to be better than the day before. I have an opportunity to grow and learn and be a better person. I am grateful for the people I have in my life, the people that I love and that love me back. So, so much we can do just from living in gratitude. That really helps us take back control of our lives. Because when you're in that spiral loop, that negative loop, you're thinking negative thoughts. We can find evidence of the things that aren't working but what if we find evidence of the things that are, are working with our gratitude? 
that's really cool it doesn't matter how stuck you feel or negative you feel you can really live in uh, a different space from your heart when you live in gratitude and of course my favorite improve your health when you are in control of your health you are in control of your mind and you're in control of your body when you're in control of your health you're in control of your mind and you're in control of your body this is just a vessel here this body that we have it's just a vessel but this is what gets us through life this is what enables us to control what we do have and what we do want so when we make the decision to choose our health as a priority, um, as a high value, and we decide that what we put in our mouths, what we expose our body to is important, we are able to can take control of our life. I know that when I'm super healthy, I'm high energy. Uh, my brain is like going a million miles a minute. It's not mushy. I don't have negative thoughts. And if I do, they go really quickly because this is powerful. And then this is powerful. I have the energy to move. I have the energy to do my routines, my rituals, the things that fill me up. I think improving your health is one of the key things that you can do to really take control of your life. There are a lot of people that are, I meet through the community, um, through this Facebook group, uh, people that come and start working with me um, in nutrition and mindset. And what I find is that the minute they start improving their health, they start to really control their life. They take back the control. We're not looking at outside people trying to fix our problems because we're doing it for ourselves. We're doing it for our health, for our mind, for our body, for our life. And it's, it's, it's beautiful, it's powerful, it's really, really amazing. So improve your health is, is such a beautiful key thing, right? You might have listened to tonight and thought, I am sick of feeling out of control in my life. I am sick of feeling stuck, um, of not being able to go forwards. And I'm happy to um, chat with you for a 30 minutes free chat. Um, just put your phone up to the QR code and you can book in um, or Abby might be able to add the link for me. And I'm happy to help you support in taking control of your life. We can create some strategies around things that you can do to take more control back. Uh, we can know all these things, but it doesn't mean that we actually implement them. And accountability or support or just having a coach or a mentor does a lot for everybody um, and you know, really propelling you forwards. Because the way I see life is we don't get to come back and do it again. This is it, right? So why do we want to be in mediocre, not really enjoying it? Why do we not want to be feeling amazing? Taking back control of our life, really owning what, what, what we really want, bringing it into us and making it happen. <coughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I'm going to see if there's any comments. I would love to hear um your feedback what resonated with you tonight what is it that you had an aha moment about um, when I was going through those um, top 10 tips are there things in there that you know that you could change you would like to change um, what is it that has resonated with you the most and I'll just wait and see what um, comments pop up so for me I know that 
taking control of my life is something I have to be focused on quite often. It doesn't just miraculously happen. But those tips that I've taken you on, they help you to keep that focus, keep that energy, those values, the things that are important to you right in front of you so that you are going forwards and you're not dragging the past with you and you're not working against the things that are holding you back and keeping you feeling um, stuck and, and um, unable to move forwards and, and have that control there in your life. Uh, so learn to say no stop putting everyone before me yeah right that is such a big one for women I think that we get so caught up in um, trying to please everybody and trying to be um, perfect or just make people happy and really what we do is we don't feel happy while we're doing it or we get resentful and uh, yeah it, it's it doesn't have a great outcome so would love to hear your uh, feedback on what it is that really resonated with you. Is there something that you would like to change about yourself um, in your search to get control back in your life? What is it that you would like to show up and, and do more of? Um, for me, I think just every time I work, even with clients um, or run my retreats or my events, I always have my own mirror work that happens or my own aha moments. And I think for me is really getting back to owning my time, uh, especially in the lead up to the retreat. I think I lost that a bit there. So I'm really excited to get back into um, being structured with my time and being very mindful how I spend my time as well. Um, Roma, thank you. Knowing what I want and I need to get crystal clear on what I want. I've been struggling with that. Yeah. And Roma, this is what I'm thinking. When you get crystal clear on what you want and when you really know what you want, bring in things to support that. So how can you have that in your daily um, vision so what can you do so that you can see that on a daily basis and bring that into your life uh, and you will see some changes and those changes will be the things that you talked about tonight that will you'll go oh wow this happened because of this um, Annie I need to own my time yeah I think we all do right we need to own our time and when it sounds like such a a simple thing but it's something that most of us don't do we don't take control of our lives in a way that we own our time inspiration thank you abby <laughs> uh so i'm going to let you all go i've gone way 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 over i am so sorry this is supposed to be a 30 minute call <laughs> i do this every week um but keep your comments coming i would love to hear what is it that resonated with you and what is it that you are going to change did you have new year's eve, new year's eve re resolutions and you haven't stuck to them is that because you are not you have no control over your life is it because you are not grasping and being crystal clear with the things that are important to you because i know what my um news resolutions were my, my goals for this year and I have to have them there all the time to remind me keep me focused and one of them's already come true which is well come true I don't know it's not a wish it's actually happened I've, I've created it so you know those things are exciting and and it's totally worth it so um if you're watching the replay hashtag replay otherwise um, everybody have a fantastic remainder of your Tuesday night. It's going to be late. Um, and just a reminder, next Tuesday night is Ditch the Diet and it's a masterclass. So it goes for an hour and a half. If you want to join, there's a link for that in the events tab of this Facebook group. And if you would like to come and join in person, next week is Winter Wellness. So I'm going to be really going through how you can up-level your health and well-being um, to get you through winter without getting sick. And I'm also going to teach you a couple of 
um, recipes uh, that I that I do with uh, myself, my family, my clients uh, to also um, support your health and well-being as well. So if you would love info on that, please pop in the comments and I will send you the details for that. That's the Healthy Empowered Women's in-person session. Um, so for the first Thursday in June, that is winter wellness. Ooh, winter wellness, love it. All right, have a great uh, Tuesday, the remainder of your Tuesday, um, and I will see you all later. Good night.